Saints. I want to welcome everybody here in the sanctuary and everybody online and welcome you here if it's your first time with us. Uh, we welcome you and I hope you will come back. Um, there's a, a lot of things going on in this church. One huge, huge thing that's happening and uh, I'm hoping everybody's praying for that. Anybody take a guess what might be happening here at this church? That's just really huge. We're ready to, we're about ready to bring a new pastor to pastor us here at this church. Now, I'm not saying that's happening next week or the next month, but we're very close 
the team has been working hard. Everybody's been working hard. And there's a lot of things that could have happened in the eight months already that we've been without a pastor. But the reason that all good things have been happening is because of this church, the congregation. You've shown up, you've done the work, and you, you've continued the life of this church. And uh, I just want you to continue praying for the pastoral search committee, for this church, as we bring a new pastor in here. And I believe that's going to happen very soon. Uh, if, if this is your first time here at the church, we invite you to uh, fill out a yellow form back on the table, and that will put you on our mailing list. This is just a reminder that we are collecting new school supplies year-round here at this church for children in Honduras. That's called uh, bread, manna from, manna from heaven, thank you. And uh, the box is right over there. You can bring that in any time. Uh, since this is the first church, first su Sunday of the month, we will uh, be taking the second offering, as we always do, for the building fund, and also we'll be blessing the food uh, in our food pantry. So if you will, just pray with me. Heavenly Creator, we thank you for the continued support of our uh, pantry, and that we can continue that pantry here at this church one of the biggest ministries we have. We thank you for all the saints that bring food, uh, give money for that pantry and to support that, and the people that work the pantry, but most, most of all the people that come in and take that food, get that food from St. John's. For us in your name we pray now and always. Amen. Amen. Our next uh, upcoming guest speaker will be Rebecca Wilson on August the 28th. Some of you may remember her. She's been with us before to give a message. And our next board meeting will be August the 28th after service here at the church. I want to remind you that there will be a membership class on September the 11th here at the church. That's a Sunday. It will be following the service. And also, just to put uh, this down uh, on, on uh, pencil for now, we're thinking about having a uh, yard sale, the fall yard sale, on Saturday, August the 22nd. That is, I'm sorry, Octo October the 22nd. <laughs> yes, October the 22nd. Uh, that's a Saturday, and uh, we'll, you'll have more information on that. That's it. Thank you. And uh, so before I bring Jim up, we're glad to have Jim back for us with the message today. Uh, absolutely. Thank you all. Bless you.
creator resides in the midst of creation, calling us to this community. Our world reigns with the Holy One, our help and shield. God, our righteousness, gazes upon the beloved with delight and concern. Our bodies wait for the Holy One, our help and shield. The Spirit of the living God greets us with fresh winds and new mercies. Our souls wait for the Holy One, our help and shield. You may be seated.
especially all the extra things that people are doing to help our church. And uh, they need prayers because they've got other duties to do besides what they're doing now, the extras. So prayers for them and uh, grace. Thank you. Prayers for the deacons and all the other ministries here at St. John the Apostle. They keep this church going. Any others? Let's go to God in prayer. Generous and loving Creator, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for each one here. Thank you for your presence in this place. And thank you for the many prayers answered. And we know that each prayer that we lift up, you will listen to, you will hear, and you will answer in your time and in your life. I pray for all of the prayers that have ever been written in this prayer book. And ask that you continue to bless this place and those who come those who even just pass by. Help us to be all that you need us to be. In peace and in Jesus' name. First reading for today is from Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 to 3 and 8 to 16. Now faith is confidence in what we hope for, and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith, Abraham, when called to go to a place he would later receive as his inheritance, obeyed and went, even though he did not know where he was going. By faith, he made his home in the promised land like a stranger in a foreign country. He lived in tents, as did Isaac and ja Jacob, who were heirs with him of the same uh, promise. For he was looking forward to the city with foundations, whose architect and builder is God. And by faith, even Sarah, who was past childbearing age, was enabled to bear children, because she considered him faithful, who had made the promise. And so from this one man, and he as good as dead, came descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and countless as sand on the seashore. All these people were still living by faith when they died. They did not receive the things promised. They only saw them and welcomed them from a distance, admitting that they were foreigners and strangers on earth. People who say such things show that they are looking for a country of their own. If they had been thinking of the country they had left, they would have had opportunity to return. Instead, they were longing for a better country, a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for God has prepared a city for them. Here ends the reading. Where no thief comes near, 
and no moth destroys. For where your treasure is, there our hearts will be also. Be dressed ready for service, and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master return for, from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes and knocks, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly, I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this. If the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken into. You also must be ready, because the promised one will come in an hour when you do not expect him. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. beautifully some of the words I want to repeat be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning like those waiting for their master to return it will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes there are plenty other stories in today's gospel but the primary message in today's gospel is about being ready with lamps lit. The Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. This gospel is less about warning us than rather encouraging us to be watching and to be faithful. Being prepared. Sometimes we are all caught unaware unprepared about what to do or what to say. I remember one time on, in a Sunday service, the homilus kept repeating the phrase, God's only son, God sent his only son, God's only son. My little daughter sitting next to me, I suppose she was about five or six, she leaned over and said, Daddy, was there a daughter? <laughs> I, had, I had never thought of it. I was not prepared to answer that. Being prepared. One time uh, I was visiting a housebound parishioner and we said the Lord's Prayer together and she asked me about that one line in the prayer that says, lead us not into temptation. She said to me, why would God lead us into temptation? I had no answer. So I said, I'll get back to you on that. Being prepared. My good friend, Pastor Ralph, he had a long list of charities he would leave money to when he prepared his will. But he was crushed to death by a backhoe in front of his house. Never got that will prepared. Mm. <clears throat> Being prepared. When Christmas Eve, I was at church <clears throat> preparing for services when a member ran up to me and said, 
my grandson is dying at the hospital, you have to come right away. So I told the master of ceremonies, well, I'll be back as soon as I can, just keep playing music. So I got to the hospital and I entered the ER space. Um, the ER doctor met me and gowned me and said, I'm sorry, I just had a pronounced little guy. So he had just died of bacterial pneumonia. So I walked in that room with the grandparents and the parents all gowned up as I was. And this little boy on this huge gurney. It was just like nothing you could do or say. And I just froze. And the little boy's dad said to me, do something, you baptized him. Well, I had three and a half years in the seminary, folks, but I had no clue what to do. So I just thought, well, if that was my child, I know what I would do. So he had on, he brought a little blanket with him. I picked him up in that blanket and held him and said to his parents and, and grandparents, let's keep Danny warm for a little bit longer. Being prepared. We are all called to do the necessary or the recommended preparations of our earthly lives. That might include a living will, a last will and testament, funeral arrangements, making amends to anyone we need to, acts of generosity to others who have been kind to us or not kind to us. Those preparations. How about our spiritual preparation? Well, some of us do great things in our life. Um, a lady friend of mine lost her job and decided she saw a need in the Hispanic community and on her own started a foundation like they have a budget of 10 million a year now. Most of us don't do grand things like that. But many of us do volunteer work in our community, in our church. <coughs> Maybe for you and me, it's not about doing great things to prepare ourselves, but about consistently preparing ourselves. I hope when I die, I will have done just a little more good than bad. Keeping me on track every day is the morning prayer I say. Before my puppy demands the first outing, I say that prayer. That prayer includes these words. During this day, keep me thoughtful, prayerful, and kind. May I be courteous and helpful to others and not turned in on myself. Keep me from any word or deed that would hurt or destroy or be ill. That's part of the morning prayer. At night, I say the evening prayer, which includes these words. Lord, forgive me for all the wrong I've done this day. Forgive me if I've hurt anyone or made life more difficult for anyone. And that prayer concludes, give me restful sleep and the peace of heart that comes from knowing that our sins are forgiven and that we're always in the hands of our Heavenly Father. Full copies of these prayers are over in the table there if you want to take one when you go out. Amen. I always try to be prepared when you when you're asked to do the call to offering. There's always a paper here. It says call to offering. And and every time, Jim, I say, what if that paper isn't there? 
And so I'm just going to say, reach in your pocket, pull out what you got, and throw it in the basket. <laughs> but I have something prepared here, so I'll save that for later. You didn't hear it. But if you hear it again, say, I heard that before. The call to offering. This is what I'm here for. For where your treasure is, there you go, there your heart will be also. Let our hearts direct the use of our resources, our time, and our talents. May our generosity meet God's expectations, I was going to say, but it says abundance, in attending to the needs and hopes of our community. May the ushers come forward, backwards, sideways, however it works. Good morning, and we bye. <laughs> John the Apostle and all NCC churches around the globe celebrate in open communion. You need not be a member of this church or of any church to come to this table. To prepare ourselves for this meal, let's join together in a few moments of silent meditation, confession, and or prayer. Amen. 
as your sister in Christ, I remind you that we are a loved and forgiven people. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You are creating a new heaven and a new earth where all suffering will cease and enemies will live together in peace. And so with your people on so earth sir. and all the company of heaven, we but praise your name and join their unending hand. of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took the element of bread and he blessed it, and he broke it. And then he said to his disciples, Take and eat, for this is my body which is broken for you and for many for the forgiveness of your sins. When you do this, do this in memory, In that same mail, he took the cup, he gave thanks and he blessed it and he passed it out and he said, take and drink, for this is the blood of the new and everlasting covenant poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory. And we feast at 
the heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of the children of God, we are bold to sing.
God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Strengthen our faith that miracles continue to happen. <coughs> Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Because I'm a veteran with an honorable 
from the discharge, you put me to the top of the list. That Wednesday, they called me and said, when can you move in? I said, Friday, and that time So within a week, I was in. <laughs> right. I know they do that same type thing with Jenna's Somebody told me that the, uh, they've made the Capitol uh, Police uh, has been redone in, to a different group, right. and that they're supposed to be in the